All right, welcome back, guys. In the last video, we saw how we can create those two endpoints for the realtors so that they can create and also get their listings. And now in this video, we're going to see how to create endpoints for a normal user so that way they can retrieve all the listings that are published as well as view the details of a particular listing. Now, for getting all of the listings that are published, this is going to be something where they don't have to have any sort of special permissions. So the way that you can envision this is if we had some kind of front-end interface, then you would see a sort of list of listings that would be in maybe cards or something, and then you can go to view the details of one of those particular listings. Now, for viewing the details themselves, this is where I wanted to make this an authorized endpoint. Now, this is an endpoint that any user would be able to actually access, whether they're a realtor or not, but it's something that most likely a normal user would be interested in because a realtor user, they're mostly gonna be dealing with CRUD functionality related to listings. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and see how to implement that. Also, if you enjoy these videos, make sure to smash the heck out of that like button because it helps the YouTube algorithm recommend my videos to others who are interested in this sort of content as well. And with that, let's now get into it. So currently I'm running my backend. I'm also running my database. So make sure you're doing the same. And then the place where we're going to be working is inside of our listing app and inside of our views.py. All right, so I'm going to scroll to the bottom. So right below this manage view that we were working on previously, I'm gonna close that side window, zoom in just a bit, and then I'm gonna make a brand new class-based view. So the first one I'm gonna make is maybe for the detail. So that's gonna be listing detail view. Then we're going to inherit our API view and then we're gonna have a get request. So I'm gonna define get, pass itself, request, and format of none. And then this right here is going to be an authorized request. So therefore I'm not gonna pass any additional permissions to this. The user has to pass an authorization header to access this view here. So now I'm gonna wrap all of this inside of a try accept in case if anything happens to go wrong during this request, then we're just going to return, if I can spell, so return a response and then it's going to have an error. And then I'll just say something like error retrieving listing. And then it's going to be a 500 internal server error. All right, and then if this, whoop, and then if everything's okay, then what we're going to be doing in this case, we're going to be retrieving a slug. So the way that this is gonna work is we're gonna have an endpoint like API slash listing slash detail. And then we're going to have a slug field, which is going to be the slug of the listing. And then that's how we can retrieve the particular listing. So we can retrieve the slug with request.queryprams.get, and we wanna get slug. Now we also wanna make sure that the user actually passed the slug. So I'm gonna have an if check, if not slug, then in that case, I'm gonna return an error response. And then we're gonna have an error and it's just gonna say must provide slug. And this is going to be a 400 bad request. Now, if this check passes, that means that the user provided a slug. So we're going to then continue on with this request. So I think the next reasonable check would be, okay, so we have a slug. Now let's see if a listing exists with the slug and is also published. So it has to be published by the realtor in order for this normal user to actually see it. So I'm gonna do if not listing dot objects dot filter where slug is slug and also is published is true dot exists. So if this does not exist, we're gonna return an error response. So to make this easier, I'm just gonna copy this one. And then in this case, it's gonna be a 404 not found because we did not find a listing that meets these criteria. And then as for the error message, I can do something like listing with this slug does not exist. And maybe I could do something like published listing with this slug does not exist. Maybe that'd be a little bit more specific. And then if this passes, then we're just gonna get the listing. So I can do that with listing.objects.get in this case, because we're gonna be getting an object, which is going to represent the single listing, not any kind of list of listings. And we're gonna be getting it by the slug and the is published. So I'm just gonna pass this in here. Then I'm gonna store this in a variable. That way I can serialize this. So I'm gonna do listing is equal to listing serializer, pass in my listing. And I'm not gonna do the many equals true because I want this to just be a dictionary. Then that way, if you had some kind of front end framework, it would be treated like an object. And then finally, the last thing we have to do is return this. So I'm gonna return a response. And then here I'm gonna have the listing and then I'm gonna pass the listing dot data in order to grab the listing data. And then I'm gonna do status is status.htp200, okay, because we're just returning something as a response. 
So there we are, we have our listing detail view. And then the next step would be to make an endpoint that utilizes this. But before I do that, I did notice a typo in my last video. So I just wanna quickly fix that. That was with one of the error responses that I had. So if I can find where it is, it had to do with the get one. And here it is. So user does not have necessary permissions for creating this listing data. In this case, it should be getting this listing data. As in this case, we're just getting the data. So this makes a little more sense. It's just something I noticed and quickly wanted to fix. But anyway, with that out of the way, the next thing I wanna do is make a URL endpoint that'll utilize this detail view, then we're gonna test it out. So I'm gonna open up my urls.py. I also wanna open up my core urls.py. That way we can see the full endpoint. So API slash listing slash. And then below here, I'm gonna have detail. So it's gonna be API slash listing slash detail. Then I have to bring in that view that I just created. So that was my listing detail view. And then I'm gonna utilize this here. So listing detail view dot as view as this is a class based view. And now we can go ahead and test this out. So I have postman open. So I'm going to make a brand new URL endpoint. This is going to be a get request. It's going to go to localhost 8000 API listing detail. And then I have to pass a slug to this. So first we can test out without a slug. And I'm just going to quickly save this. This is going to be for normal user get listing detail. I'm going to save that inside of my listing and then in this listing folder. And let's see what happens if I just send it off as is. There we go. Authentication credentials not provided with a 401 unauthorized. So we have to make sure we log in. So I'm going to open up this login for normal user. And I'm just going to send off a request here. So now I get my access token. So I can copy this. Then I can go back into here and I can pass an authorization header. And then I'm putting this in the wrong spot. So let me remove this. So in my headers rather, so authorization, and then I'm gonna put in bear, and then paste in this access token, send off this request, and there we go, must provide a slug. So now we've passed our unauthorized, and now we hit our first error check. So now after this check, we're gonna have one more possible error, which is this one right here. So that's another one that we can test out. So let's pass an invalid slug. So something like this, let's send that off. Publish listing with this slug does not exist. Perfect. So now we have to get one that does exist. So to make this easier, I'm going to open up this one here. And then I'm just going to send a request to this. So I have to make sure I log in with my realtor user. So I'm going to log in. And also this should instead be my Bob Smith one. So I'm going to change this because in the last video, I was doing some checks by making a different realtor user. So let's send this off. Grab my access token. And then I'm gonna reopen this retrieve listing, pass in the correct access token, send that off. So now that way I can grab this slug here. So now with that slug, I can now pass in the correct slug and that should get that listing. And it looks like we have to actually publish this one. So what I'm gonna do, because the one that I created wasn't published, I'm gonna make a brand new one that's actually published. I'm just gonna change it a little bit. So I'll change this to be something like five South Woodsman Lane just to make the change a little easier. And then in this case, the only difference is this one's going to be now published. And then I can send that off. So now we have, oh yeah, I also have to pass in the authorization header. So I'm just gonna grab that from here since I use the same one for this get. I'm gonna place that inside of here, send that off. And then this is probably happening because I have to set some new images here. So I'm just gonna remove these ones and then set some new ones. So that's what I'm gonna do house two. And then I'm just gonna set these interior photos. And then I'm gonna send that off. And there we go, listing created successfully. So that worked out. And now this one is going to be published instead of not published, which means now when I go to this endpoint here, I should now have a published listing once I send this off. And it looks like I still do not have a listing with the slug and that's because I'm using the wrong slug. So this is the new one that I made. So I can save that, send that off. And there we go. Now we get this listing detail. So perfect. So now we've tested out everything for this endpoint. So now let's go ahead and work on our next endpoint, which is gonna be to retrieve all the listings. And of course they have to be published. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a brand new class-based view right below here. So I'm gonna do a class, I'm gonna call this listings view, and I'm gonna pass in API view to inherit that. I'm gonna define a get method, pass in self, request, format none. And then this one here, I wanna make sure that you don't have to be authorized. 
So in order to do that, I can pass in permission classes, and then I can do permissions dot allow any. And then I also want to make sure that I have permissions inside of here. So that's something that comes from REST framework. So I'm going to also import permissions right over here. So now with that, I should have these permissions be allow any, which means I don't have to pass an access token in my authorization header to hit this right here. So now let's go ahead and implement this. So once again, I'm going to have a try accept that wraps all of this. And then I'm going to return a 500 internal server error if anything goes wrong. And then I'm just going to say something went wrong when retrieving listings. And I might also do it in the same sort of approach for that previous view that I was working on. So I'm going to say something went wrong when retrieving listing detail. I think that's maybe a better error message for this. So now let's go work on this part. So I think the first check that makes sense for this is just making sure that there are any published listings in the first place. So I'm going to do if not listing dot objects dot filter where is published is true dot exists. Then in that case, if there are no listings that are published in our database, then I'm going to return an error response which is just going to have an error object that says no listings, or maybe I'll do no published listings in the database, something like that. Then I can have a status of status HTTP 404 not found. And then if we don't hit this right here, then we're going to continue on. So all we really have to do is retrieve the published listings. So I can do listings is equal to listing dot object dot filter where is published is true. And then another thing that would be nice is to also order this by the date. So I can also chain on an order by, and then I want to order by the date created. And now these order buys, they're going to go from smallest value to biggest value. And now when it comes to the date created, we want the biggest value first, because that's going to be the latest date. So we're going to have the minus here in order to have this be correct. And then after that, I want to serialize this. So I'm going to do listings is listing serializer. I'm going to pass in my listings and I'm going to also put this many equals true. That way this is going to be a list. And then after that, I just have to return a response where I have my listings and then I can pass this listings dot data. And then after that, I can just have my status, which is going to be a 200. Okay. And there we are. So now the last thing we have to do is implement our endpoint for this. So I'm going to start off by copying down a line. So this endpoint here is going to be API slash listing slash get dash listings. And then I'm also going to bring in that listings view I just made. Then I can pass that into here. Whoops. I can pass that into here. There we go. And now I have my endpoint in place. So the last thing we have to do is just test it out. So I'm going to open up a brand new tab here. This is going to be to my local host 8000 API listing get dash listings. And then I can just send this request off like this. So first I'm just going to save this. So get I'll do normal user get listings, save that, send off this request. And there we go, we get the listings. And in this case, we only get the one listing because this will only get the listings that were published by the realtors. So we only get this one right here, which was published. So this is working appropriately. So there we go, we hit the goal of this video. So now one problem that we have is that our realtors cannot update their listings and they also can't delete any listings. So that's going to be what we tackle in our next video. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet, please hit that like button. It goes a long way to help a channel like mine grow and get recognized so others can benefit from the videos I release as well. Also, I have links in the description that you can check out. I have one for an e-commerce course that you can check out if you're interested in learning to develop an application like that. I also have a link for joining my Web Development Kings Facebook group. That way, if you want to personally ask me something, then you can go right ahead and do that and I will happily help you out. It doesn't cost you anything. So if you're scratching your head about something, then you can go right ahead and ask me to help you out. Only questions I probably won't answer are if you want to help you build some kind of personal project as I don't quite have the time for that sort of thing, but anything else is fair game. You can also post something in the group itself. That way other developers in the group can help you out with something as well. The group is all about growing your expertise as a developer. So if you're interested in that, then go ahead and click that link in the description and join the family. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notification bells. That way you don't miss out when I release a new video and I'll see you in the next one.